another episode of Super Reaction Bros. I'm Kristen. I'm Christopher. And on today's episode, we're taking a look at the Screen Junkies Honest trailer for Blade Runner 2049. Yes. Yes. So, I've already seen it. I actually saw it, or I saw both movies. Oh, I saw the first film before the second film came out, and then eventually I did see the second film as well, and the shorts that came with it. Before you ask, we both saw the final cut before he like gets around. Yeah, yeah, we we saw the final cut of uh, the first Blade Runner, not the original version, which apparently the studio exec said, "Hey, we need Harrison Ford narrating everything." Yeah. Okay, what did you think? Because I li I like the films. Yeah. Even the shorts that came with them, I enjoyed both films. What did you think of the film? No, I loved it. It was very. It was definitely. It, it, to me, I liked it because it was like it, it was definitely that noir type of futuristic type of uh, investigation right. where it's like a simple investigation he's got to do but then it's it's something bigger than even he was expecting you know uh, it doesn't matter for you know for both characters that's what this is you know it's a simple case that turns out to be something even grander than what they had, had uh, gotten themselves into you know and i really loved it and just the art style and everything just during a time period when it came out in 19 yeah 1982 when the first one came out it's like you can see why it was such a it became such a big hit because this is like this is like somebody ahead of their time telling the story mm -hmm. and just visually you just you're like this came out in 1982 holy crap it was funny I, I just laughed when it said like the years in 2019 I'm like <laughs> that's funny um, but I know I loved it and I watched like you told me because I watched these as of this recording I watched these like these over the past two days um, because I really want to watch them, it's just I finally found the time to watch everything, and like I said, I watched the first one, and then I watched, before I watched the actual 2049, I watched the shorts, because he told me, he's like, definitely watch the shorts before the thing, because some of the shorts kind of help explain certain parts, or certain things, yeah. um, in, in the film, and even with the sequel, 2049, I thought it was like, again, it's like, it's like somebody just grabbed, you know, the concept, or like, how I read it perfectly, is like, they kept it in the same tone, but also the same type of world aspect of what you see. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they kept it to where it's like nothing was outrageous. Nothing, they didn't push the limit over or anything. No, to me, I thought I enjoyed it. I really had fun with it. I, it was like the twists and turns they had you left and right. Where I'm like, oh damn, okay, yeah. You know, and, and even with 2049, when you have a sequel where it's like something from a film that was like over like 20 years ago, 20 however many years ago, I forgot. Um, and it's like. Even the trailers, you're expecting to see Harrison Ford already. Because in the trailers, it may seem like, damn, he's going to show up like early in the film or something. No, even when I watched the original trailers, I, feel, I felt like, no, nah, he's not going to be in it for a bit. You know? even, yeah, and I loved it, though. It was They did it right. They did it good where it's like, they brought in one, the first original character, which is Edward James Olmos. And then they, they that's when he finally brought his character back. You know, But it was near, near the end where it was a brief stint. But they did it in a way where it's like, the focus was on Ryan Gosling's character. That's what I loved about it. There's a lot of moments where I'm like, I know they're probably gonna make fun of Alice trailer, where it's just that this that serious tone that he has, you know, with with, with him, just like, yeah, yeah, you know, just like he has to be so serious about it. But yeah, I, I again, we love the films. They did, they they've done a beautiful job. Um, I think that's that should be it. This they just, they just wrap up that story for Deckard, and that's it. But anyways, let's dive into Honest trailer and see. What they think and what funny moments they probably brought up that maybe even I was in there going, that's so true. Mm. So here we go again for Honest Trailers, Blade Runner 2049. So here we go. From the visionary director behind that movie where Amy Adams talks to technicals. This is a good movie. So watch it comes a critically acclaimed sequel Thomas. that dares to ask provocative questions like what is a soul what is the nature of love and hey where's everybody going hello we got gosling here <laughs> you guys like gosling right yeah it flopped as much as the first one in theaters for 40 years but it still became its own hit though by the prescience of 1982's blade runner which may have predicted a future where the Soviet Union survived. Flat screens were never invented, and <laughs> wars were fought by intelligent androids, but did predict a world where every sci-fi movie and TV show was a cerebral, ponderous mind about artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. and so weighed down with importance, all the characters talk at half speed. Thanks for the So what you saw... Uh, yeah, they paused a lot. happen. Many is the height. Oh, 
it had like the T60 roll. No, no, it's just. Nucleus. The pause is, yeah. <laughs> A grim dystopia where replicants are still hunted down by the LAPD. A reboot-friendly great blackout has wiped out any information that could potentially move the plot forward. Pre blackout. That's gonna be tough. And meet K, a new kind of replicant that can't ever go rogue and turn on his masters. We don't run in the older models too. Until he totally goes rogue and turns on his masters. <laughs> what the f is with you? Ryan Gosling disappears. <laughs> into a brilliant performance where he says very little. Mm -hmm. you have anything more to say? Barely yeah, just the, the, the say. They'll be coming after me soon. Do you remember anything? Do you have any memories from before? You look long. And spends most of the film by himself just kind of wandering around. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's weird compared to the first film. Yeah. You know, where it's kind of like, you're, we're just in the city. It's like, we're going everywhere. It's just like tumbleweeds everywhere. <laughs> we're showing the rest of the world with like... Wait, has every Ryan Gosling character in the last decade been a replicant? This explains so much. <laughs> <laughs> you guys go beat him up for me? My stunt guy? Huh? Driver. Drive. Drive, yeah, drive. Original star you wish it was right. Yeah. As Rick Deckard, the maybe replicant Blade Runner, who, like a true deadbeat dad, abandoned his child and ran away to live in Vegas. He'll take longer to show up in the movie than he would at a celebrity charity event, then give his most lively and energetic performance of the decade. So he's at about a five, five and a half. He <laughs> takes off against cruel technologist Jared Leto, who finally got a chance to show up in a sequel. Plus, he'll be <laughs> true love, Rachel, and oh wow, yikes! I like that scene. Well, with, like, but there are lots of other women characters in the movie. It's not like they're all badasses or sex objects who get killed to move the story along. Like Robin Wright as badass Lieutenant Joshi killed. Killed. Okay, well there's love, the badass evil replicant who's determined to kill. Okay, there's Joy, an artificially intelligent hologram programmed to please men. And then dies. And then dies. All right, how about Mariette? She's a prostitute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she lives. She makes it in the movie, I think. Yeah, you know, I had to go to the bathroom like twice, so I really don't know. So finally, clear out some time for this epic, beautifully realized second chapter to one of the most influential sci-fi stories of all time mm -hmm. that delivered the original storytelling audiences demanded as an alternative to interchangeable blockbusters. That didn't show up to support it at all. Yeah, that's fucked up. But like you said, the first one was like that too. Yeah. It's a high-minded meditation on the ethics and reasoning behind robot fist fights. Okay. Yeah. There's a difference. Yeah. Punch that robot. We'll figure out later if it has a soul. Story. Special K. Okay. Living alone. So low. Oh. Girls, 30 seconds to Mars. No, really, that's how long it takes in the future. Princess Buttercup, the Terminatrix, Dave Bautista, but my little pony, Mars is tragic. Bots, baby. You know, it's really too bad that this movie didn't do better. Dylan Nip probably won't get another shot at reinventing another classic sci-fi property. Dune, Dune. Huh. Uh, it'd probably be smaller scale to gauge audience interest at first. Are these guys laundering money for the cartel or something? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah they were finally really... I'm sorry. Your answer has to be in the form of a question. I'm a dwarf and I'm digging a hole. Diggy, diggy hole. I'm digging a hole. He's okay. not a dude. You're a dude. This is a man. I'm a spidey girl in the Marvel world. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, no, but... No, to me, it's like... It, just like how you said that, like the first one did the same way where... It became, in a way, a cult hit. Even though it didn't do well in theater, it became a cult hit. And here, it's like, people, I think for those who enjoyed what was of the first one, they enjoyed this one because mm -hmm. it was like, it was set the same, like I just said, the same tone, the same type of mood and stuff like that, how it went. And that's how it was. And that's what made me so like, wow, this, they did this great, a great job at telling it. I never realized 
how much pausing there was. I know. It's like, it's like I said, it's like, I'm like sitting there going, oh shit, there was a lot of pausing. I didn't even realize There was a lot of pausing, and even it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, but like you said, it, it, I think the director, he he wanted to keep it at the same tone that came to that level as the first one, because that's what made the first one such a cult hit. And I think that's why they grabbed him for Dune, because it's like, if he's going to be able to transition from what, what made this popular then, or made such a cult hit... This, let's use him for this because he could probably do the same thing with it. Which I hope Dune does well. Dune's another one where I'm like, I know very little about and may need to watch it just to understand what the hell Dune is. But that's just me. But like I said, they did a great job overall. I, I enjoyed it. They probably have a lot of good points. Where it's just like, yeah, there's a lot of spacious. I, know, I love the part where it's like, you know, it wasn't just about robot, fi you know, robot fighting, it was about finding the moral and ethical. About robot yeah. fighting. That's I like when he's yeah. talking about, yeah, that's right, beat him, beat, beat him up yeah. before we find out if he has a soul or not. So, other than that, if you're new to the channel, you can hit the like button. If you want to talk to us more about stuff like this, comment down below. If you want to share us around, share it around. And if you like us just a little bit more than anybody else when it comes to talking about honest trailers, hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon as well. Let us know what you guys thought of uh, Blade Runner, whether it's like pretty much overall all Blade Runner. Um, did you like the first one? Did you think the second one was better than the first one or the other way around? Or you think it was just one as a whole? You loved it, you enjoyed it. Let us know. And also let us know what you guys thought of their honest trailers and our reaction to this honest trailers. But most importantly, thank you for watching. So until next time, I'm Chris. I'm um, Christopher. This has been a very replicant filled episode of SRV. See you later. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to check out our previous reactions, or any one of our other SRV shows, check out one of our playlists down below. If you want to check us out in the social universe, you can find us on Twitter and Stardust at Super React Bros.